after World War II, a new eugenics was resurrected out of the bones and ashes of the old eugenics. The eugenics movement has been at the forefront to establish a new scientific racism that justifies oppression and exploitation and racism. In fact, racism is inseparable from the roots of psychiatry. The entire history of psychiatry, beginning with scientific conclusions that were made in the 1830s, was an effort to prove the intellectual inferiority of African Americans. Benjamin Rush is the father of modern psychiatry. And he is the one that gave us the term nigritude. He said that all blacks have inherited this disease. And this particular disease, it caused them to be inferior. In addition to that, it was the reason why it was very important that blacks remain segregated and separate from whites so that whites did not inherit this disease. Asserting that negritude was a form of leprosy, Rush justified segregation as a medical necessity. And that became an argument to continue slavery. The fact that you have, uh, have brutalized a whole group of people had nothing to do with that. It had everything to do with some genetic link and that basically you were just a diseased person. So when a slave master wanted to get rid of a, a recalcitrant slave, they could just say, oh, well, they're, they're suffering from this disease. Draptomania, that is the name of the mental disorder that was contrived by Samuel Cartwright, um, who said that blacks have a mental disorder if they had a desire to run away from slavery. Running away became such a uh, common problem that psychiatrists attempted to give that a disease. He says, but that's a cure for that. And the answer was, the question was, well, what's the cure for that? Frequent whippings, frequent whippings. You'd be surprised how that disease clears up uh, when the lash is put in place of their excuses. After slavery was abolished, psychiatric racism not only persisted, it intensified. The American Journal of Psychiatry officially proclaimed that Negroes, as descendants of savages and cannibals, were ill-prepared for higher civilization, while their pseudoscience eugenics stepped up its racist activities. There is a clear and long and intimate connection between the eugenics movement and the Ku Klux Klan. Harry Laughlin, who was the Carnegie Institution's director of the eugenics record office, had close relationship to the Ku Klux Klan through the publication of a book called White America, which was written by a uh, major Klan leader. So Lachlan wrote a glowing review of the book in the Eugenics News. Uh, and at the same time, you have the Ku Klux Klan using eugenics to justify their racist goals. 